Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video from your boy Tidalicious. No, it's not another montage highlights or funny moments video, but a quick beginner's tips and tricks on what it means to play the bomb or spike on post plant situations. If you're coming from CSGO, this is probably instinctual. But if you're newer to bomb plant round based FPS games, this could be a helpful guide to help me clutch that one key round for the dub. This guide is to focus on how you as an individual can clutch the round out in those low number post plant situations. Now if you're a higher ranked player, maybe this isn't the most helpful guide. And maybe you can even educate me a little bit more about the game with some helpful comments below. Before we get started though, let's talk a little bit about the general flow of the game. These are not hard and fast rules with games like Valorant, things are always ever changing every little thing can change the dynamics of the game. Also, I will only be focusing on bomb plants. Yes, I know there's a lot more to the game like utility management and map control, but for the purpose of this guide, let's focus on just the spike. Generally, as defenders, you want to run the clock down so the opponents don't have time to plant the bomb. The ball is on the attacker's side to make a move. Once the spike is down though, the roles are reversed and now the defenders are on the clock to make a move. As you can see here, the attacker side decided to pull a TSM on us and push aggressively to take map control away from us and successfully crippled us to a 2v3 situation with no map control. At this point, we just have to frag out and get onto a site. Fortunately, after this early skirmish, I noticed that they had overextended and tried to get around on the big flank at top mid. And so I got two easy kills. Yeah. Oh. Oh, there's another one there, yeah. Maybe B is actually better. Now the A side is open, but I'm left on a one on one situation, so I head on over there. First thing I do is close the door. That way, the Phoenix can't just walk onto the site from the garden area without me knowing. Yeah. Now if you remember, my teammate Ray's died quite a bit further behind me at T-spawn, so I knew I had quite a bit of a head start compared to the Phoenix, and jump on the scaffolding without the Phoenix hearing me to be in a great post-plant position. So the first thing I do is to check if the glass is broken. Fortunately, it is not. So I know there's no way for him to sneak up on me without me hearing him, because he either has to break that glass or jump up onto the boxes to get up to the scaffolding position. So now I'm just holding the CT spawn position. I'll get, I'll get. I missed one, two shots here, actually. Yeah. He has one flash left. He might hear his flash. Now that he made noise on the site, I know exactly where he is. This is where the fun begins. Now, because there's still plenty of time for him to defuse the spike, what you want to do is wait for him to tap the spike, and then you reveal your position. But the key thing here is to not take the fight, because if he wins, he still has the time to defuse the bomb. With ample time left on the spike, defusers will generally fake the defuse to bait you out for a fight. Remember, your role now is to just delay the situation until he has no time to defuse the bomb at all, not necessarily to kill him. Oh. <laughs> so I jiggle peek oh. him until he gets <laughs> off the bomb. Dang Rinse and repeat until he has to commit to the defuse for an easy kill, or just until the spike blows. And there you have it. Round secured for the team. Now here's another example of how it delayed that post plant situation. I probably shouldn't have won this situation out, but that's what I mean by there's a lot of kind of unknown factors that kind of plays into how you can clutch these situations out. So let's take a look. First thing you'll notice here is I actually place a trip wire to kind of cover off the elbow area. You will not kill As you will see, the Rays will pull out her ultimate here. They should have information that I was behind the sign, and I should have no reason to be alive there. But she didn't notice where I was, she was spinning around looking for someone, and, and I took that opportunity to just kind of kill her from behind. Now the Sage dropped and spinning around as well, so I wanted to take that opportunity to kill her. But I didn't actually see her. Fortunately enough, I just landed a quick headshot onto the cypher instead. My camera placement gave me the information that Sage had to be in elbow. So I sat behind the thin side of the sign just to hide and check my cam to know that she wasn't pushing from the other side. 
In the heat of the moment, I didn't notice I had a teammate holding that position already. I hope you didn't forget about my trip. I knew if she wanted an angle to kill me, she would have to cross the trip, so I felt safe just sitting behind my cam being a peeping tom. Now that the timer is low enough for her not to get the diffuse, I decided to peek and see if I can pad my KDA. I can't, but I won the round anyways. Oh yeah, see, backside, backside, backside. Here's another post plant one on one situation. So I noticed the breach didn't actually want to defuse the bomb yet. He wanted to kill me before he got on the bomb, and that was a great decision from him. But unfortunately, he made way too much noise, and I knew it was coming. So instead of defending the bomb, I actually ran away from the bomb, knowing that he wouldn't have time to run back to the bomb to defuse it without me knowing. Eventually, he ran out of time, peaked him, and I won the battle. Nice. <laughs> so funny, just ran. Yeah. So yeah, here's another quick TV. tip for you guys. Yeah. If you're on a two-on-one uh, right, retake right, situation, right. meaning you guys have the man advantage, try not to yeah. give the attacker the ability to take two one-on-one -on -one situations. So what I mean is that I know a lot of people like to have one person holding the bomb and the other one protecting them. But if you have the man advantage and you have time, better to actually flush them out with a fake defuse and have two guns facing the enemy rather than just one and then just finish the defuse afterwards. Here's one last tip for all of y'all. If you notice the enemy Sova is holding his ulti, Hunter's Fury, for post-plant positions, if he actually throws out two of his three ultimates, what you can do is actually just hold the bomb and get the defuse in. A lot of people make the mistake of throwing one out, they get the kill, but then they don't hold the second one. So now if you have over 80 HP, you should be able to just tank the last hit and get the defuse. Well, that's it for now. If you guys enjoyed the video or found the video helpful, drop a like or subscribe. And if you guys want a more comprehensive guide on post plants as a team, drop a comment below. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.